Well folks, it's lovely to have you join with us today again for a little Wednesday in the Word and uh, we continue to work through this wonderful passage in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2 just about a chosen people, a royal priesthood. Today we're thinking about knowing who we are, uh, kind of God's treasured possession where then that, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful or marvellous light. Uh, so that's the, the sentence, the second part of verse 9 that we're going to think about today. Uh, but just about, well, shining for Jesus and all that's involved there. We'll, we'll get there in a moment. Uh, also just remember when our Sunday, uh, Sunday service, Sunday mini service as we work through a little series uh, looking at the life of Joshua. And we're jumping into Joshua chapter 1 uh, this week. Um, we've eventually got there after four weeks looking back at what we can find out about him and those old of the history books back on and through to Exodus and Deuteronomy and so on. Uh, so we're in Joshua chapter 1 this week. Also just today our thoughts and prayers are with the, the McNair family who've uh, led uh, Bethna to rest today. Uh, we just pray for Harry and the loss of his wife and for, for David and Dorothy and Cynthia and the whole family circle just uh, in their time of loss uh, of, of Bethna. Can we pray together, please? Lord God, as we gather together again around your word today, we ask that you would be a lamp to your feet and a light to your paths. We thank you for the privilege of being found in you called to be your chosen people, a people belonging to you. And with this privilege, Lord, comes a great responsibility, a responsibility to live in a way that honours you, that represents you well in our homes, our places of work and our communities. And so, Lord God, we ask that you would illuminate our hearts now as we open your word, shine your light in us and on us. We are very aware, Lord, of the darkness and difficulty of these days. And so we ask humbly that you would encourage us through your word. And again, in that regard, Lord, we pray for the McNair family circle, that they would know your comfort, your presence and your peace with them today. We are also aware, Lord, of the darkness and the shadowy places in our own hearts and our minds. Lord, places of secret sin and shame. Places that we would rather keep hidden, keep secret, keep to ourselves. And yet, Lord, we know that nothing is hidden from your sight. As scripture reminds us, where can I go from your spirit? King David writes in the Psalms, in Psalm 119, that the unfolding of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. And we pray that this verse now, Lord, would be a reality to us as we desire to hear you speak to us. Lead us, Lord God, we pray again just in this, these moments, as we lay ourselves before you, for your word. Lord, give us a desire to live in your ways and for your glory. So lead us now in these moments we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See, we're thinking today just about this little phrase, second part of verse 9 in 1 Peter 2, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Which again echoes away back to Isaiah 43 verse 21. You know the way we've said that this little passage in Peter echoes back to Exodus 19 and to Isaiah 43. And just Isaiah writes verse 21 of Isaiah 43. This people I formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. Again this picture of being God's lighthouse people. So these are the words of Peter, but I want to read just for now 
the words of John, written in 1 John. He says, That which was from the beginning, which we heard, which we have seen with our, our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared and we have seen it and testify to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. And then we we'll jump over to chapter 2 of First John 2. If anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in darkness, whoever loves his brother lives in the light, and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded him. And just as John writes here, just this focus of light and darkness. Where we've been for the last couple of weeks looking at this, this great passage in First Peter, we've thought of it being God's possession. You're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. God's treasured possession. That's good news. And if you hear good news or you've got good news, my goodness, do you not want to share it? If your football team have won, I always remember years ago a chap called Alvin Rossborough running around the car park in first cool rain because Liverpool in the last moment uh, of a match, I think it was the FA Cup final, just stole the game. And Alvin ran out the far exit and he ran around the car park screaming and shouting and he was so happy. If there's a baby born, you want to pass on the good news. If there's an engagement, a young couple have committed, maybe even an older couple, have committed to themselves, to each other, in engagement for marriage. And maybe, uh, in another sense, maybe you've got good news from the doctor. Something you feared was difficult and uh, dark for the future, but you've got good news and health news. Y you want to talk about it, you want to tell people about it. A and that's really where this passage is going. You're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. And then it goes on, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. There's this good news that you're God's possession. So on the back of being his possession, make that declaration. This people I form for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Again, says Isaiah, and I say that's just that little parallel pa passage, or that passage that First Peter is echoing way back in the Old Testament. God has called us to himself. And he wants us to tell of his good news in our community and in our lives. Warren Wearsby helpfully says, Each citizen of heaven is a living advertisement for the virtues of God and the blessings of the Christian life. Our lives should radiate the marvellous light to which he has graciously called us. And again, the commentators, as they look at this, say, it's about our conduct and it's about our conversation. It's about our conduct and it's about our conversation. It's about our lips 
and our lives telling the goodness of God. Again in 1 Peter 2 and 12, just a few verses on here. Live such good lives among those who don't know the Lord, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Or the psalmist writes in Psalm 96 verse 3, to declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among the peoples. Your chosen people, royal priesthood, holy nation, people belonging to God, to God, that you may declare the praises of him. It's a declaration. But look even further, because you miss it in the passage, there's an invitation here. Because it says here that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness. And, and, and you would miss it. It's very subtle in there. The invitation of him who called you. Again, what does it say in the first part of the verse? You are a chosen people. Wearsby again says we are God's chosen people because of his mercy. So your chosen people, royal priesthood, holy nation, I know I keep going over it, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out. And not called you out as in told you off, but called you, called you out of darkness into light. But him who called you. Again, I think a few weeks ago we, we mentioned that verse in John 15, verse 16. You did not choose me, says Jesus, but I chose you. And appointed you to bear fruit. To go and bear fruit that will last. You did not choose me. But I chose you. One of my favourite verses in Philippians 1 verse 6. That he who began a good work in you. Do you get the theme here? Do you see that picture? That actually what's going on. Is that the work of Christ in our lives. Doesn't start with us. It starts with him. There was a little chorus. I'm not sure whether it was youth praise. Uh, from years ago. I uh, used to sing it, I know I'm talking way long ago. I was once in darkness, but now my eyes can see. I was lost, but Jesus sought or came and found me. The author of the work that goes on within us. And so the invitation that comes is from him. There's this lovely verse in Romans 8 and verse 16. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And how we come from the darkness to the light is because God sheds his light and shines his light in our hearts, in our souls, and he draws us to himself. So we are to declare the praises of him who called us. You know Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, where it talks about his grace, we're saved through faith, and it's not from ourselves. He is the author of the work. You did not choose me, but I chose you. you know, we're getting into predestination and all again. We're not going to go down that road. But he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. You are a chosen people. It is God who has started the work in our lives. By his spirit, he has awakened us. That idea of his spirit testifying, witnessing with our spirit that we are his children. It's God's spirit within us touches the spiritual part of our being and makes us come alive. A declaration that you may declare the praises of him, the invitation of him who called you, illumination, out of darkness into his wonderful light. Darkness is about fear and fumbling and frustration. Actually, it's a biblical picture of sin. And I have friends, fellow that I studied with, Alan and his wife, Sally, Went to work down in Five Mile Town just to minister there in a few churches. And I had tea with them one night. And Sally said to me, Gordy, I just can't get used to the dark. They had lived all their lives in a big house in a state out by Carrick Fergus. Street lights everywhere. And Sally says, Gordy, just the darkness at night. You go out the back and you can't see your hand in front of your face. And a friend, Robert and Sharon and Coleraine, Moved out of Coleraine and out to the Dun off the Dungiven Road. And Sharon said the same, just the darkness. Robert was used to, brought up in the country uh, in days gone by. But just again, that darkness of no street light. But there's fear and there's kind of fumbling around. There's frustration in the darkness. Um, but it's ultimately in, in the Bible a picture of sin. 
where light is a picture of clarity and cleansing and, and showing up even we can have new lights here and recording the, the services and they pick up every wee bit of fluff or every wee uh, piece of dirt on you and uh, every wee flaw and something about light that brings clarity and cleansing but again in scripture it's a picture of salvation and I'm told that in the, the Billy Graham Centre in Wheaton in Illinois and um, just again an evangelistic training centre one of the things was built architecturally in their place uh, in, in this property was a big long tunnel of darkness and it came out of darkness into a room that was just illuminated in an amazing way and Billy Graham wanted it there as this picture of walking through the darkness of sin and then coming into the light um, and so this whole picture here that we're called out of darkness into his wonderful or indescribable or marvellous light a couple of quick things prophecy way back in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 and we know this verse from Christmas don't we the people walking in darkness have seen a great light and then John the Apostle picks this up in John chapter 1 um, because he talks about the person it says in him was life and that life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness but the darkness has not understood it so Isaiah prophesies about the great light that was to come John says that the great light the true light that coming into the world is and was Jesus and then actually through the gospel of John it's interesting to look at and then picked up as well then in first John that we read earlier this pattern in John's gospel about darkness and light this theme that develops and six times in the gospel of John we read about darkness the word darkness but my goodness 23 times we read the word light this is the verdict light has come into the world but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil it says in John 3 and 19 Nicodemus and John 3 came to Jesus at night and again the, the theologians would say this is a picture of his darkness of sin and then coming into the light. In John 8 twice we read Jesus says I am the light of the world and part of this in this story we also read about blind Bartimaeus whose eyes were opened and came from darkness to light. In John 12 walk by the light before darkness overtakes you. We read in verse 34 and verse 35 the man who walks in the dark does not know where he's going verse 36 put your trust in the light while you have it and this is jesus speaking these are jesus words judas betrayal in john 18 took place at night and then we know in the story of the cross don't we that whenever jesus took our sin on the cross darkness descended on the world now we don't read that in john we read that in Luke 23 and 44, darkness came over the whole land. Again, a depiction of sin having its power over Jesus, but we know that that power was defeated. And then John writes in 1 John 1, 5 to 7, that passage we read earlier. But God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. Walk in the light as he is in the light. And 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6 says, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, I love this, made his light shine in our hearts. So this picture of that we're called out of darkness into his wonderful light. Darkness as a picture of sin, light as a picture of God's salvation and then this encouragement to walk in the light, to declare the light and to celebrate the invitation we have invited into Christ that who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Charles Wesley just simply puts it like this, in, and can it be? Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night darkness. And thine eye diffused the quickening ray, and I woke the dungeon flamed with light. We know the song, don't with him, don't we? My chains fell off, my heart was free, and I rose, went forth, and followed thee. Walk in the light 
as he is in the light. Let's just recap the invitation we have through God's grace, through him who called you. The illumination we can experience through God's grace, called out of darkness into his wonderful light. And then the encouragement to make a declaration of God's grace, to declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. I think these words are marvellous and let's celebrate them today. We are God's possession. We're called to declaration. We're given this glorious invitation and we're called to live in illumination that we may declare the change that God has brought in us. We'll think a wee bit more about that next week. You're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Thanks for joining us today again. Keep safe. Again, please keep in touch and keep your eyes on the Lord in these difficult and trying and wearisome days. But let's remember that we celebrate he who is the light. Amen.